harm reduction is a different way to control substance use, or it's actually, it's not a way to control substance use, it's a way to control the consequences of substance use. So the principle of harm reduction is the idea of reducing the negative consequences of drug use. Um, but by doing so, you're accepting that the substance use is going to be used at some level and you cannot prevent it. So it's like saying, uh, uh, and we'll go through a lot of examples, but the key concept here is you do, you're reducing the consequences of, of use, but you're not reducing use itself. So examples, how does this work in practice? Well, with injection drug users, we have needle exchange programs. Um, dirty needles can spread infectious diseases, which is a severe consequence of being an injection drug user. So we set up needle exchange programs so people can turn in their dirty needles and then get gleaned get clean needles for themselves and sometimes for other people um, in response. We do this for alcoholics. Actually, a lot of our alcohol use initiatives are harm reduction principles. So anything we're doing to prevent or reduce drunk driving is a harm reduction program. We're not trying to prevent people necessarily from reducing their alcohol consumption. We're just trying to prevent them from drinking and driving. Now, there's still a debate within tobacco use about whether we should promote harm reduction um, at the very core of it. So there are people who are promoting electronic cigarettes and smokeless, um, and smokeless tobacco products as a harm reduction uh, method compared to traditional cigarettes. Because when you really run the numbers, e-cigarettes and smokeless tobacco are not quite as harmful as traditional cigarettes. I'm trying to phrase that correctly because they're certainly not healthy. They're just not as harmful. Now, I have my own opinions about this. I'm not tech really in favor of harm reduction. I under in, Within tobacco control, I understand the argument, but I think there are social considerations to consider for this one, uh, one product type in particular. Um, and finally, a way, a harm reduction program that's not necessarily an official program, but um, individuals would do is drug substitution. So the best example I have is a story that I was a part of. I was part of a research study on brief intervention. So we're giving these five to seven minute motivational interviews to try to, try to reduce an individual's uh, drug use habits. This individual, he was uh, enrolled in the study for his heroin use. He was using a large amount of heroin on a, on a daily basis, on a regular basis. By the time I did the follow-up and I was talking with him, he was no longer using heroin, but he was using marijuana, and he was smoking a large amount of marijuana every day. We're talking 12 to 15 joints of marijuana, uh, of marijuana every day, and I was asking him, like, why are you using so much? Like, this is dangerous to health. There are harmful health consequences of just smoking in so much, both the drugs itself as well as breathing in that much smoke, and his answer back was, well, at least I'm not using heroin, which is worse in my opinion. So this individual was substituting his drugs. There is less risk involved in marijuana than heroin, so he was using marijuana to replace his heroin use.